Like I've said in previous videos, I'm a pretty big Fire Emblem fan. So, I've always wondered, what would it look like as an actual anime? I mean, yeah, the cutscenes are pretty animated, at least nowadays, but what about an actual anime series? Let's find out! We start out with Jake and Mars and Alice running for their lives. The three barricade themselves in a room from the forces of Garnef, an evil priest who is trying to resurrect the Dragon of Darkness. Before the evil forces break in, Alice uses a warp staff and warps Jagan and Mars far away. Two years later, we find a more matured Mars alongside with his friend, Sheeta who has a massive crush on the prince. Sheeta took off the day training to spend some time with Mars, but he keeps daydreaming and she gets mad. They eventually hang out and they end up back at Sheeta's castle where Mars gets invited to dinner. He eventually overhears Sheeta's dad talking about the land being invaded. He has a flashback of the last battle he was in with his dad. Their ally Graw ends up betraying them, forcing Mars' dad, Cornelius, to get involved. He quickly encounters Garnef and, uh... Well, mages and Fire Emblem are OP. Mars and his men have a meeting and plan to meet with the princess of the land of Orleans. Orleans? I'm just gonna call it Nola. Suddenly a guard busts in and reports the city they're staying in. Talus is on fire! Sheeta comes to report pirates have invaded and her father needs help. Mars and his army gathers and disbands the entire pirate invasion with the help of Sheeta's retainer, Agama. Agumon. After the invasion, Mars and his men leave now that the enemy know where they reside. Sheeta and Agumon end up going with Mars' crew. Before we continue, I suppose I should address that anyone who knows Fire Emblem, or at least some of the characters because of a certain fighting franchise, would know that his name is actually Marth, not Mars. The US didn't get a Fire Emblem game until the Game Boy Advance, and that was in 2003. This movie came out in 1995, meaning this was our only interaction of anything involving Fire Emblem up until Marth and Roy were added into Super Smash Bros. Melee. So while yes, Marth is named after the Roman god of war Mars, I feel like the other names are just them not knowing how to pronounce them. I say this, but the names are the same in the Japanese version of the movie, so I actually have no idea. I'm just gonna keep pronouncing the names the way the movie does, so uh, sorry Fire Emblem fans. Anyway, we cut to a man named Naval with two swords running from a band of bandits. He slays all of them easily. The bandit leader comes up to the man, asking him to join them. He declines, but then he sees a woman in a cage and says yes. We cut back to our main crew, now freeing another town from pirates. <laughs> The leader of the now free town meets with Mars and Jagan to discuss getting more help. We cut back to our new swordsman who sees one of the bandits named Julian sneaking food to the woman from earlier who is named Alina. We go back to Mars and Jagan talking to the town leader. He wants Mars and his crew to rescue a local nun who turns out is Alina. Mars decides to head to Nola through Devil Mountain Pass, which is where Alina is being held. The boys are knocking out two birds with one stone. We then get shown the bandit leader winning a bet and getting very odd looking money. Why is that the design? Why? The merchant he had bet with is then interested in buying Lena and ends up, well, buying her. The next morning, Julian and Lena make a run for it, but a group led by Naval pursues. Naval ends up slaughtering every one of his own men and then brings only Lena back, letting Julian meet up with Mars. Julian leads Mars' army to the base and they begin to invade and rescue Lena. Our heroes get ambushed, but quickly turn the tides in their favor. The merchant attempts to flee with Lena, but Naval sneaks up and kills him and goes, Not in my house. Naval leaves without Lena. Julian and the others end up rescuing Lena. Naval and Agamon end up fighting before Sheeta steps in, convincing Naval to join their side. Our heroes all leave the base with their new allies and make it to Nola, and then the movie's over. Yep. Uh. That's it. No. I'm not kidding. That's it. I was lied to. And so are you. The anime was a two-part series. It was originally going to be four, possibly more, 
but lack of interest and funding just didn't allow it. I mean, even the cover had Marth with Falchion on it, so it obviously was going to go places, but, you know, things like this happen. Look, <laughs> there's no hiding. This, uh, a movie is boring. It, it's bad. It's terrible. I watched both the Japanese and American version of this, and neither do the Fire Emblem franchise justice. Both of the episodes of the anime were around 20 or so minutes long, equaling to around 40 minutes, and I summed up the entire plot in four or five. There's a lot of nothing going on, even the action scenes are less than mediocre. I got a little curious and decided to look up what else the company that made this, KSS Inc., had worked on. You can barely find anything on this company. The only other notable thing they have worked on is the original Naruto. They also created an adult brand OVA company called Pink Pineapple. And then in 2004, they would file for bankruptcy and be bought out by Soft Garage. So I looked up Soft Garage and they have done a lot of work. Not really anything notable besides GR Giant Robot, but I don't know what that is. Oh shit, they make titty and butt mouse pads! With the success of the Castlevania anime, I really wonder what a modern day Fire Emblem anime would look like. I hope you guys enjoyed this, I thought it'd be fun to try something new, and depending on how this goes, I, you know, might cover other OVAs in the future. Anyway, deuces.